can I live though? Can I live? I have a really good response to that. Okay. I have a line that's make people feel real shifted when you see it. <laughs> okay. When people when people see like messed up things to you, right? Mm-hmm. And and it's kind of like a passive aggressive thing and you can't really like respond or like they're seeing something <laughs> underhanded or ugly. Let me tell you yeah. what you see. What do you mean by that? And you see people get real shove it. And I love it. <laughs> real shove it's it. like my favorite. <laughs> hey, it's Gabby Faye. Welcome back to my podcast. I'm so excited to have a very special guest with me today, Sarah. But before we get to her, I wanted to let you know, I'm so grateful for all of you for coming to uh, watch the show. You may have seen me on a viral TikTok about my high dating standards being posted on the internet, like The Shade Room. Real Toronto News, World Star, all the other blogs. And I'm happy to have this platform to just share with you uh, a little bit of insight into my world as a fat woman, a plus size body who dates high value men, who dates, um, you know, out of the societal range of people, what people say that I deserve and don't deserve and all of these things. And I just wanted to, you know, share with you um, some of my ideas and thoughts on that, amongst other things. And so now I want to uh, introduce my very special guest, very good friend of mine, the Kirby Trini. Sarah, how are you today? So good. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so Sarah, thank you for coming. Can we get a little background about you? Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? Let the people know. Oh my God. It's, it's a funny as soon as you say that immediately I think about something my mom said recently when someone asked her what I do and she said Sarah has her hands in many pots <laughs> it's very true I mean very true um my name's Sarah I'm originally from a little island in the Caribbean called Trinidad hey. which is actually where Gabby's <laughs> mom is from yay so <laughs> West Indian heritage yes. <laughs> and um I moved to New York about four years ago at this point, and I am a full-time plus-size model. Uh, I also do a myriad of other things. I'm a TEDx presenter, writer, speaker, um, I don't know, I'm just an explorer, creative. <laughs> All of the things. <laughs> All the things. Sarah does have her hand in many pots. She's very talented. She does so many things. She's such an inspiration to us all. Um, when I first met Trini, I call her Trini Sarah because I <laughs> I know a lot of Sarahs. And when I talked to my mom, my mom was like, oh, is it Trini Sarah you're talking about? And so that's her name for us. And, um, you know, a few years back, I, you know, I love Trinidad. Like my mom is from Trinidad, lives, lives in Trinidad sometimes half of the year. And I wanted to do more modeling more fashion work and turn that so I needed to know more about the fashion world there and I'm like well who can I contact who you know knows about plus size you know bodies plus size fashion in Trinidad and I found Sarah on Instagram and she was doing so many photo shoots so many things and I'm, I'm like wow this girl really knows what's going on like let me talk to her so that's how a friendship started and brewed and and we I really got to get to know from her perspective what it's like to be a plus size uh, model, plus size body from where she's from in Trinidad, how the growth was from her for her from Trinidad to New York City and you know what that journey was like for many of you listening you may be in uh, living out of you know the USA in another country and may want to know you know, how to get into modeling and, you know, how Sarah went from Trinidad, the first plus size model out of Trinidad to come to New York City, get signed by a plus size modeling, a modeling agency in New York City. And she's doing it. And I, I'm just so proud of her. And I, she's so inspiring. And, you know, I wanted to, I wanted her to share her story about, you know, how she got from there to here and what that was like. So Sarah, why don't you tell us a little bit about, a little bit about growing up in Trinidad being a plus size body and what that experience was like and how you even decided to to get into modeling and become a model and um and how you ended up in New York City (laughs) well it's a very strange and magical story and it actually started off 
quite sad. I never in my life imagined that I would be a plus size model because I was body shamed for most of my life. Um, like many people are, right? Um, especially back in the day, 30 years ago, being plus size was not as celebrated as it is now. Right. So I grew up in a family where, I mean, my, my TEDx talk is actually about this story, but when I was 12, my uncle told me that fat girls are only good to have sex with and that if I didn't lose weight, that nobody would ever marry me or love me and I needed to lose weight. So I naturally spent the majority of my teenage years struggling with eating disorders, um, punishing my body, doing everything that I could to try and fit into the mold that the culture um, that I was in, in my particular family, was trying to get me to fit into. And it was very hard and it was very painful. And I spent a lot of my life struggling to find clothes. Um, th there's not a lot of like great clothing options or anything like that. And I actually remember my first job was working at my office, my father's, the office where my father worked. It's so my first job as a teenager and I couldn't find anything to wear. And there was this <coughs> shop down in Trinidad called Catwalk where they had like cheap clothing, I guess it'd be like a US equivalent, it might be like a, I don't know, like a H&M or Forever 21, not as nice as that, but like, <laughs> you know. And um, I was able to just like squeeze into the largest size that they had there. And my boss at the time told me that my dad was telling all the managers that he was ashamed of me working there because of like how untidy I looked. Wow. So that was like fashion has been something that is extremely important to me mm. because being able to dress properly, it's the way that it's how you present yourself to the world. And I believe that everybody should have access to decent clothing to be able to present themselves in a way um, with so that they can feel dignified, regardless of uh, if you're a size zero or a size 70. I don't even know if that exists, but if it does, everybody should be able to present themselves in a way that makes them feel good. And, and, and when you look good, you feel good. Yes, definitely. Right? So, so it started that way. And one day I was in my mid to late twenties and I just kind of signed on to Instagram and I found all of these plus sized women all over the world in <laughs> in New York as well wearing fabulous clothes and I just had this insane awakening that like nothing nothing's wrong with me the clothes the clothes should fit the body the body shouldn't fit the clothes amen sister that's similar like to my story I you know grew up in in society it doesn't matter where you're at like people just sometimes you go places and you just feel like they just hate fat people sometimes you know and I grew up in an area where you know I was squeezing into the last size of you know whatever store it was Charlotte Ruse Forever 21 you know back in the day they didn't have Forever 21 plus they didn't have a Charlotte Ruse plus they didn't have any of that they just had you know very small sizes the biggest would be like a 12 14 if you're Isn't lucky that crazy <laughs> if you're exactly. lucky right and i i found myself at like 14 15 years old wanting to be cute and i would just go into my mom's closet and steal her clothes because she like at least i was fashionable for her age was up for a mom and it was cuter than my stuff that i was getting i was wearing walmart okay sorry walmart has gotten fashionable but back hey, in walmart the day have some good things these yeah, days these days yes but you know like the big t-shirts and the tights like i was sick of yeah. wearing big t-shirts and yeah. tights i wanted to yeah. wear something cute frumpy and you're, you're a young girl yes. and you want to be able to be be cute cool and stylish like i remember when i was in college um, we would go to the mall. I, I studied in Florida and um, I would go to the mall with my friends and we would go into all those stores like the Abercrombies and all of those. And I would just have to stand there and watch my friends choose clothes because they had nothing for me. Oh, no. Yeah. That is awful. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's the reality of most people that are, I guess you call us like elder millennials. <laughs> you know, we were we were really the ones that and 
the generations before us that I think really felt the brunt of the shame and I feel like a lot of the work that our generation has done um, in diversity and inclusion in terms of size diversity as well right. I feel like it's really had an impact on the brands and it's it's now you, you can find fabulous things like what me and Gabby are wearing yeah. but when we were younger they didn't have that right if it's meant to be then it'll be a love song